is the last lecture on the class of this high temperature ceramics and in this lecture I will describe the uh, erosion wear of niobium uh, diborite ceramic. So, like titanium diborite, niobium diborite is also one of the ultra high temperature ceramics and number of groups around the world are working on this ultra high temperature ceramics. So, that is why what we call global scenario on ultra high temperature ceramics research. You will see in US it is Bill Farinal's group at uh, Missouri Rolla, uh, Van der Paris group at Imperial College London and Bill Lee and John Wiener and in Europe also in Italy some of the groups are working. Uh, in India it is uh, Bishas's group and Vikram Jairam's group at IIC Bangalore apart from the two instructors of the present NPTEL course and in Japan and China a host of people are working at uh, NIMS, Tsukuba, uh, Uyakuma National University, Tokyo Tech, uh, HIT China as well as uh, some people in Korea they are working also in ultra temperature ceramics. So, this is the uh, broad overview of ultra high temperature ceramics in India and as you see that several IITs they are working on ultra high temperature ceramics. Out of them uh, very few groups are also working on tribology of ceramics. Um, uh, the particularly the tribological properties I can mention uh, that VSSC Trivandram, uh, uh, this is that ISC Bangalore uh, for example, B, uh, this uh, DMRL Hyderabad, CGCR at Calcutta, IIT Kharagpur, IIT Roorkee, IIT Kanpur, these are the places where tribology research is currently concentrated. Now, niobium borite is a is one of the member of this uh, transition metal borides and then you can see this transition metal borides, uh, this consolidation of transition metal borides like titanium diborite, zirconium diborite. Uh, the similar challenges exist also for niobium borite. So, first thing is to start with these starting powders. In the niobium borite for example, if you see in the top panel A figure it is that unmilled powder and in the B figure it is for the for B, B, C, D is it a after ball milling for 16 hours with tungsten carbide, this is for tungsten carbide, this is for agate and this is for zirconia. So, only in case of zirconia you see that D90 D is 7 on 3 nanometer and uh, D50 is 4991 nanometer. In agate apparently the D50 values is fairly low that is 171 nanometer, but there is lot of contamination from agate as you will see later. Now, if you see that x-ray patterns, x-ray diffraction patterns, you will see that the contamination from silica is quite extensive here in the silica and then tungsten carbide milling by media also there are small amount of tungsten carbide are present and neobium boride is quite significant in all these cases. Now, as far as the sintering uh, and densification is concerned at uh, 1750 degree Celsius if you see niobium boride after spot plasma sintering it is sintered to 99.5 percent sinter density. Now, spot plasma sintering is a technique which is very similar to hot pressing, but the fundamental difference between spot plasma sintering and hot pressing here it is the current that is passing through from the top die to the bottom die through the graphite die punch assembly which contains these ceramic powders. And since it is a porous ceramic powders there are a lot of white spaces. Now, when current is trying to pass through these powder particles and if the, if the powder particles are non-conducting that majority of the current will pass through the graphite die wall. But here some more, more current will be passing through the powder compact and what happens that in case of the powder compact that void spaces there the current will experience resistance. And because of the resistive heating and joule heating that locally the temperature will shoot very high leading to the higher mass transport. That is the entire mechanism of the spartan centering of the ceramics. Now, what is the uh, special sp uh, processing scheme or heating scheme that we have utilized to densify this uh, niobium boride materials? 
So, we heat it uh, up to 1500 degree Celsius at 100 degree Celsius per minute heating rate and then we hold it at 5 minutes at 1600 degree Celsius we hold it at 5 minutes at 17 we hold it at 5 minutes and finally 1750 degree Celsius we hold it for 2 minutes. So, it is a four stage sintering or what we call multi stage sintering where the powder compact was held at 1500 at 1600 at 1700 degree Celsius for 5 minutes each before it is held at final sintering temperature 1750 degree Celsius for 2 minutes before it is cooled to room temperature. And what you notice here when it is part plasma sintered at 1750 degree Celsius this nibem boride with zircona milk powder you can see there is a clear a presence of the tetragonal zirconia. But when you use as a agate as a ball mill then what happens there is a second phase then uh, this is uh, apart from silica there is a third phase called niobium NB3SI. So, what happens the niobium oxide niobium poride reacts with silica and then it forms this NB3SI and then also it will form this boron oxide ok. So, this reaction actually take place in during the spark plasma sintering of these materials. So, this is that HADAF image it. So, high angle annular diffraction pattern images TM bright field uh, micrograph. So, what you see here that there are presence of niobium boride and also zirconia phase is dispersed in the in the matrix and there is a equiax grains of this niobium boride uh, which the if you look at this micron bar it is roughly around 1 micron in size. So, 1 micron or less than 1 micron and this is that uh, selected here diffraction pattern of the hexagonal niobium boride and where it is uh, very clear this niobium boride is retained along with zirconia. Now, in terms of the different properties for example, sinter density niobium boride has a sinter density of 6.55 by theoretical density 6.58 it is close to sinter density hardness is 21.7 giga Pascal which is very high elastic modulus is 4015 plus 9.1 giga Pascal fracture toughness is 4.4 MPa square root meter and tensile strength is 88.73, 88.3 uh, mega Pascal and flexural strength is six, around 600 mega Pascal which is this combination of properties is not bad. Now, what you notice here there is a very clean grain boundaries. So, no uh, grain boundary phases that is uh, also expected and then we have seen the stacking faults and some part of these twins and these are these twins that are intersection intersecting twins are observed in these materials and these are the kind of defect structures which we have very clearly observed in this niobium boride microstructure. This is the high resolution transmission electron microscopic images and this one is essentially called lattice fringe images. So, these uh, transmission electron microscopy analysis of ceramic materials just like niobium boride and so on is extremely difficult because the sample preparation itself it takes a lot of time in because one needs to have that electron transparent thin film before one can get very decent reasonable and scientifically meaningful transmission electron microscopic images. Now, this left one if you see this is this bright field TM images and bright field TM images of niobium boride one can clearly see this lattice fringes right. Now, in the right hand uh, side of the images you have you see that FFT images as well as inverse FFT images and this FF from this FFT images one can find out that what is the interplanar spacing. In case of hexagonal niobium boride the interplanar spacing is 0.325 nanometer and you will see also see a positive edge dislocations while you see the different lattice planes also you will see there is a, uh, a planar defect like in the terms of the edge dislocations which is a line defect which are also present in these materials. So, this is another bright field images showing the moire fringes as well as the asymmetric twins. So, this uh, this these asymmetric twins essentially indicate that when these materials are uh, heated at high temperature under uniaxial compaction. So, essentially deformation twins also generates particularly at high temperature and when it is cooled down. So, these twins are present across the cranes which is which is the way it should be because once a twin starts 
it does not terminate, it should not terminate at the middle of the crane unless it is intersected by another advancing twins. So, that is what we learnt in the in the standard material science textbook and we also observe the same phenomena in case of ceramics. Now, coming to the high temperature erosion behavior, now before you uh, before I explain you that high temperature erosion behavior. So, erosion essentially means that you have a flat surface right and you have a erodent particle. So, this is called erodent particles. So, which will be uh, in impinging at an angle theta right and this what it does is this erodent will strike the material and the stream of erodents right at a particular speed and this erodent uh, depending on the erodent type and velocity this flat material would experience a wear and they too will form the crater subsurface deformation here. And uh, this particular erosion wear loss in case of metals you can find out by measuring the changes in the weight, but in case of ceramics just like any other case of ceramic materials we use laser surface profilometer, we take different 2D profiles then we integrate over the distance to get the wear volume. Now, if you plot the erosion wear rate as a function of angle of impingement, that is theta, then what happens in case of metals it goes through a it it it, it goes through a transition at around 30 to 40 degree to theta values and in case of ceramics then this uh, this is for ceramics ok. It goes on increasing up to the angle 90 degree ok and this is the case for the metals and this is the case for the ceramics. So, for ceramics erosion wear is maximum at 90 degree. So, therefore, what is the point that I am trying to make here is that when you do the erosion wear experiments with metals, but you should conduct these experiments at preferably at 30 to 40 degree because one of the major one of the major reason behind that because you know that 30 to 40 degree erosion wear is the largest or erosion wear goes through maximum. And one has to when you develop new materials for wear resistance applications, it is important and imperative to understand their wear mechanism and also measure their wear loss at the most aggressive wear conditions as much as possible. So, from that point of view for ceramics that angle of impingement should be 90 degree for, uh, for to assess the, the wear resistance under the most aggressive conditions and that is at the impingement at 30 to 40 degree for metals. Although people do vary the angle of impingement, but if you want to do very limited experiments and just to assess the performance under the most aggressive erosion wear conditions, then I would suggest you to do it where the wear loss is maximum. So, what are the different parameters that is important? Uh, what I said that erodent type, typically the erodent type can be either alumina or silicon carbide, uh, this is the uh, most commonly used erodent. Uh, then erodent velocity, that velocity at which the erodent is um, impinging and what is the kinetic energy of the erodent? It is half m v square right. So, m, m is the total mass of the erodent, v is the velocity of the erodent. So, half m v square is the kinetic energy and kinetic energy that will be transferred to the material and that can cause either deformation like in case of ductile metals or it can cause fracture in case of brittle materials. So, these are the two major mechanisms that can be operative under that for the two different classes of materials ok. And third one is the temperature. Temperature means particularly 
for ultra high temperature ceramics one must one must do erosion study not only room temperature but also high temperature as high as possible like 800 degree 1000 degree and so on here i must mention that most of the commercial machines at present are limited in terms of their capability to operate as high as at 1000 degree celsius so there should be a push for all the commercial suppliers to design and develop new erosion wear tester or new tribo tester with their capability to work at 1000 degree celsius and beyond so higher the temperature capability more would be our understanding of the high temperature erosion or wear at height of different ultra high temperature ceramic materials now having said this we have done these experiments uh, in that gas jet erosion setup this is the schematic of the gas jet erosion setup so this is the furnace so you have to keep this entire erosion nozzle as well as the specimen specimen holder inside the furnace here so this is the typical nozzle length and this is the stand off distance and this is the mixing chamber mixing chamber is like you know when you want to use two different erodent powders you can mix it at intermediate place and you can you can you can mix also with the gas and through this gas jet these erodent uh, particles will be bombarding on the material surfaces and it when materials will be experiencing very high temperature and through nozzle you can also tailor that depending on the nozzle diameter you can also tailor you can also allow the amount of the erodent passing through this nozzle diameter okay so this is that 50 millimeter diameter samples typically we use that is the top panel you can see that uh, sample holder that is embedded in the sample holder and this is that 25 degree celsius you can see through the glass that you know this erosion experiments and when the sample is red hot at 800 degree celsius this sample also this uh, erosion wear uh, is possible erosion experiments can be conducted at 800 degree celsius as well okay this is the optical profilometer uh, based surface analysis 2d surface analysis at different temperature from uh, from at 25 degree celsius to 400 degree celsius to, a 20, to, to 800 degree celsius and what you notice here in that 25 degree celsius it is 29.8 micron in 400 degree celsius it is 12 micron and at 800 degree celsius it is 8.3 micron so if you increase the temperature the, if this temperature is increases of the erosion if you see that erosion wear depth that micron value decreases so what it means that severity of the erosion damage that decreases as you increase the temperature and this is an extremely important observations because these ceramics are meant to be used for high temperature applications and if these materials can experience less wear or less erosion damage at high temperature there is nothing like it and that is how this the, there, there is a success in developing this kind of materials with the expectation that these materials would experience less wear at higher temperature now in terms of the phase assemblage after erosion test what you can see is that this niobium borate materials um, this is the niobium borate materi uh, material and you can see at 400 degree celsius very clear niobium boride peaks there is no niobium oxide peak so niobium boride is extremely resistant to oxidation at 800 degree celsius you will see a lot of these alumina particles they are kind of completely embedded uh, on the or covering the surfaces that's why you get lot of alumina particles so perhaps at higher the temperature this alumina particles almost like they are welded uh, on the material surfaces and that is why you are getting this alumina peak very strong and tetragonal zirconia peak that is present uh, in the spart plasma as spart plasma sintered materials and that comes from the milling media for these particular cases. Now as I said that as a material scientist who have 
uh, who have great interest in tribology, uh, we are always interested to see how these wire mechanisms, they changes at different temperature, right? So, this, top, this one has room temperature at 25 degree room temperature and this one is a 400 degree Celsius. So, at room temperature you can see there are signatures uh, of this uh, flaky exfoliation as well as there are small cracks and these small cracks you can see very easily. Uh, the, uh, these cracks are present, but at 400 degrees Celsius after the erosion test is over, you can see there are signature of the pull out. This is the circle the way I am tracing. This is the circle for uh, the grain pull out region and there are sharp and shiny fracture edges that, that are also uh, clearly observed after testing at 400 degree Celsius. That 800 degree Celsius, you remember that at uh, if you if you remember that wire red, that at 25 degree, if our room temperature it goes to 400 to 800, the wire depth decreases, and what it means that either these alumina particles are covering entire material surfaces, and then even after ultrasonic cleaning also, these alumina particles are embedded very strongly, and the second thing is that. Perhaps this at 800 degree Celsius at higher temperature, the ceramic is not prone to brittle fracture anymore because at high temperature there may be signature of some deformation that is possible. And that is why this grain pull out and fracture edges although they are observed, but the severity of wear is certainly lesser than in the room temperature or 400 degree Celsius. Now, what we have done and that is quite interesting is that we have to understand that what is the wear mechanisms in much more with much more clarity. In order to do that, we have taken that eroded surface and this ero that debris particles and then we have done very careful TM sample uh, for uh, just we, we put it in the grid and then we have milled it and then what we have done, we have done the transmission of the microscopy images. What you see that most of the cases where there is niobium boride is there, but there is also orthorhombic zirconia. So, this orthorhombic zirconia was not present initially, it was called tetragonal zirconia. Now, as I said, uh, we have seen for the cryogenic sliding wear of zirconia, but tetragonal zirconia goes to orthorhombic zirconia and before it goes to monoclinic zirconia. When tetragonal zirconia undergoes phase transformations, the orthorhombic zirconia is the intermediate phase. So, orthorhombic zirconia pre phase is present not only at low temperature sliding conditions, the cryogenic sliding conditions, but also when these materials are eroded at high temperature like 800 degree Celsius, again tetragonal zirconia transforms to orthorhombic zirconia and very confirmatory evidence we have got it from selected area diffraction pattern and this is what you can see here that is SADP pattern of this orthorhombic zirconia. Now, when you see this eroded surface in that left hand image you can see the bright field image of this ultra fine scale microstructure of eroded surface, the surface scratches and so on and you can see there is also signature of niobium oxide formation. Now, this niobium oxide formation is so low that one cannot record using X-ray diffraction pattern and they are because their uh, intensity or their amount is much less than what can be detected using X-ray diffraction analysis. But here what we can see here that in the selected area diffraction pattern clearly shows that NB2O5 has formed and NB2O5 essentially is the result of uh, so, so so, niobium oxide, so niobium boride NbB2, it undergoes uh, oxidation to NB2O5 during the erosion wear at 800 degree Celsius. And you see that NB2O5 is a monoclinic phase and this NB2O5 also lattice spacing is uh, 4.489 nanometer. And if you look at the right hand uh, images, you see there is a bunch of edge dislocations and these edge dislocations are positive and negative edge dislocations. At some of the places positive and negative edge dislocations that has come together and then they can annihilate 
and they can form a uh, very clear lattice plane. So, what is the major message that we are getting in this after this erosion? Because this is the extremely important observations because we have done this erosion where at different temperature at 400 degree Celsius and 800 degree Celsius and we have done this careful transmission electron microscopy image analysis. And what is most interesting that what whatever we are not able to detect using X-ray diffraction or scanning electron microscopy, when you do transmit electron microscopy, we are able to see all those signatures like NBB2 undergoes uh, oxidation to NB2O5 grains and that is because of the erosion. You also see the lot of dislocation activity in this eroded region essentially saying that these are the signs of dislocation plasticity which is which is taking place at high temperature leading to the reduction in the wear damage, wear induced damage. So, this presence of this multiple dislocations if you look at this particular uh, micrograph you know that um, in this kind of images for the NB205 grains it is extremely fascinating to see that these particular grains is this NB205 these are the two grains here the uh, along the 313 bar plane the interplanar spacing is 0 0.309 nanometer and here 0 010 plane here the NB205 the interplanar distance is 0 0.382 nanometer. So, in this particular range you can see that there is also there are lines uh, along this line this edge dislocation and this edge dislocations essentially essentially are present and they are the signatures of the dislocation activity in this materials of the eroded surface. So, all in all this this combination of the dislocation activity as well as NB205 phase formation essentially indicates this erosion experiments at 800 degree Celsius causes measurable oxidation and also um, noticeable dislocation activity and it is quite plausible that dislocation plasticity reduces the wear of these materials because dislocation plasticity in contrast to uh, micro cracking induced spalling which commonly takes place in the case of the brittle ceramics. So, these are the two things that is mainly important in this particular case of ceramics. So, finally, I would like to acknowledge the uh, different funding agencies which have supported our research on tribology over the period of close to two decades now, first at IIT Kanpur, Indian Sub Technology Kanpur and secondly at Indian Sub Science Bangalore and these funding agencies mostly they are federal government funding agencies like Department of Science and Technology, Department of Atomic Energy, Defense Research and Development Organization and Indian Space Research Organization. And um, all these ultra high temperature ceramics work like zirconium borate and titanium to uh, zirconium borate based materials are recently supported by Brahmos Aerospace New Delhi that is a joint in the Soviet venture on aerospace. Thank you very much.